my name's Corey. Um, I'm the guitar player in Million People. Um, yeah, I'm Rob. Uh, I play drums in a Million People. And my name's Phil. Uh, I play bass and I'm the vocalist in a Million People. I'd say for me, uh, probably late teens. I was about 17 years old. I was just finishing secondary school. Um, I hadn't met Rob at the time, but it was with that band that uh, that I did meet him. I think it probably was when I met you, you know, that I started taking yeah, music yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it was nice to find out now. Yeah, yeah, because then after that we got we got the first album out with our first band, and then and then and then we started a million people, and that's when it, you know, yeah. started picking it up a little bit. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's a long time ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was the last member to join the band. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. most recent member. Of yeah. Um, yeah, I think for me it was pretty much like the same deal. Like I, it was just after I turned like sixteen and I was finishing school, I joined Radio Masquerade. And I met Phil through that because, like, you were just leaving at the time, weren't you? So yeah, I'd, I'd been <laughs> in that band for a while at yeah, that point. Yeah, been in the band for a while, and then I joined to play to the drummer, um, and then just like, yeah. So I, I met you through that, and then we decided to start a million people, and that's when I sort of took started taking music a little bit more seriously, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I started guitar when I was about eleven years old, and I never really took it seriously because, like, you know, you're just kids aren't you? Know, and you know, you know how it is. Yeah. But you definitely I think I started the but earliest yeah, out of all of us. But yeah, I think I've been out. I've been in numerous metal bands, punk bands, and stuff. But um, yeah, I went into a bit of a hiatus to just not join a band, and then all of a sudden, obviously, I think it was uh, who left the guitar player. The last one. Oh, Phil Cox. Phil Cox, yeah. yeah. Legendary and Phil then, Cox. And then he left, and then you messaged me one day saying, "Do you want to be a guitar player? Come for a tryout." So I come down and you know it just kind of took off, didn't it? Really? Yeah. 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 I've been looking back yeah. since then, really. Yeah. Mm. I yeah. felt like we kind of knew anyway, but like, yeah, be a good fit for the band. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we, we knew you like. I mean, you guys knew just the way before, and I knew you before. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. I think that's when, even though, I wouldn't call it serious. I think the formation of a million people was the start of something resembling a serious band. Mm. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, the music we write is is it's just matured over the years, hasn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I met you um, through school, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we did go to the same. Yeah, school we went to together. the same school. We didn't really, we didn't really speak yeah, we that much. We weren't in the same circles. Like we yeah. were both musicians. But yeah, we weren't in the same bands or anything like that. Yeah. And yeah, it was all. It all sort of ended up happening when. Probably like after we left college and stuff. Yeah, really, pretty much. It? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's, it's funny how it works sometimes. Yeah. It's like the time that we were least likely to meet was actually when we did. Yeah. And when we started jamming together. Yeah. It, it, I just find it weird that school didn't didn't bring us together. Yeah, like that. of course not. <laughs> and then Rob. Yeah, came I mean, a little bit afterwards. I came a little bit afterwards because um, I'm like a few years younger than you guys. The are. baby of the band, no, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but pretty much like what I said before, like joining Radio, Radio Masquerade. I mean, I met you through. All the friends that I made through yeah. Masquerade, you were in really Masquerade, so that was pretty much like the uh, like catalyst that we brought everyone together. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. For those not in the know, Radio Masquerade was mine and Rob's old band. Um, just ours, the, the yeah, in that band over time. all of our old school friends. We released a couple of albums, and that's essentially how a million people started when Radio Masquerade ended. I think that's Phil's. Yeah, yeah uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much all me. Um, my dad was in a band back in the 80s called A Thousand People. Um, so I was just like, yeah, it's, it's all right, but I can, I can go one better. <laughs> I actually went a thousand times better as it was. Uh, decided to call us a million people. I'm not entirely sure where a thousand people came from. Um, although I do know that the old guitarist, uh, Martin Fevier, I think he's called. He does Jupiter Studios in Seattle or somewhere like that. So, yeah, he's, he's doing all right for himself now. Uh, I suppose I have him to thank for where the band band name came from as well. So, uh, yeah. Cheers, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an easy one to answer, answer yeah. Is, yeah. Some bands are like, oh, no, I don't know where. Well, they've got some really elaborate story behind Yeah, them. or they've yeah. like, been like... brainstorming ideas for years and <laughs> nothing quite stuck until we found this one name, but... No, it just sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah. came really naturally. Uh, so yeah, um, my role in the band, I'm obviously the lead guitar player and rhythm guitar player at the same time. I mean, yeah, um, 
obviously, we all have a part to play. I mean, normally Phil comes up with a melody um, at home and then we kind of work around it. So, I don't know, he comes up with a nice guitar, lead, well, like, nice bass lead, and then I've like kind of come up with a nice guitar lead, or Rob, Rob comes up with some drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, I mean, we just kind of work around it, really, but, you know. Yeah. I just like making chuggy riffs. Mm. I think <laughs> we it's rare that we ever come to the table, as it were, yeah. with a full written song. Yeah. We'll just be like, oh, check out this like yeah. check out this five seconds of stuff. And yeah. then from that, it'll, it'll evolve yeah. into a full thing. Something that you won't say as well, that you're better at than everyone else, is the production side of things. Yeah. Mm. Corey, he's actually going to uni and he's studying yeah. music production. Yeah. I only finished all that stuff in sixth form, so I'm way behind him now. It's handy to have a brain like Corey when we're in the studio <laughs> because he knows what he's talking yeah. about a little bit more than, than me or Rob, I think. So I just play the drums, really. Like, um, I've always, I don't know, I've, I've never been like super heavily involved in like the writing side of it, so I just sort of write the drum parts to go along with. Or, or like we said, like, I'll come up with a drum part and we'll write something around that. Um, but yeah, I just write the drum parts to go with whatever Phil or Curry comes up with yeah. usually. So yeah, that's all I really do in the band. I think Rob is essential purely because of the rarity of yeah. drummers in our yeah. local yeah. area as well. I'm a dying breed. Just the fact that you play drums in the first place is... <laughs> yeah. It's 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 to be appreciated just for... A gift from the heavens. It's a gift, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a gift. Yeah. Um, yeah, as, as Corey said, I'm the lyricist. Um... I think that it's good that all of the lyrics come from a, the same place because the fact that all of the rest of our riffs and everything come from different places, it's nice that it's all got a cohesiveness in the lyrics. Yeah, agreed. I'm trying to think of a time that anyone else has ever written <laughs> lyrics, but I don't... No. Nah. Yeah, I think, nah. I think I'm, I'm the only one. I'm not creative when it comes to words. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the sound guy. <laughs> I think that we're luckier than a lot of other bands in the sense that the way that we put on shows, we like to do fewer shows and have more people go into them. Whereas a lot of bands in local scenes, from what I've seen in my experience, will do lots of shows over lots of weekends uh, sort of like burn the scene out a little bit sometimes and less people will want to go especially when most of the people that go to your gigs are like close friends and people that you hang out with anyway so yeah we try and avoid that and we try not to get people burnt out on what we've got to offer um so yeah that's 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 given us a lot of freedom in the pandemic to just write and it means that people don't expect so much of us which I think is nice. Or maybe it's that we don't expect so much of ourselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely think like uh, lockdown's given us more time to write and stuff. I say it was. Like, uh, um, so, I mean, we were back, we were back practicing, oh, I don't even know how long ago it was now, but before everything got shut down again, mm. we, you know, we have, we have some new songs written and stuff and we have time to yeah. get those fleshed out, ready for, for recording when things open again. Practice in itself has so, been a bit of a problem as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we haven't built that connection again for, yeah. for some time, and you know, just not being able to get in the studio as as much and as often. Yeah, yeah. I just feel less motivated sometimes just to play because obviously, you know, yeah, yeah, but, just purely because everything's a bit shit at the moment. <laughs> uh, you know, it just makes you lose your motivation. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it just because you've got more time it doesn't always mean that you want to use the time to be creative because you're just feeling down a lot of the time. Um, you know, so you got to keep yourself, keep yourself yeah. lifted up somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. We've been all positive on the, like, the writing side of it, but actually being, getting out there and being able to practice and then go out and perform, well, obviously we've not had that for a year. So yeah. it, it's been, there's like, a silver lining to it, I guess. Yeah, I we've think we always been able to write more. Yeah, we always try and see the bright side mm. anyway. Yeah. I think, don't we? Yeah, I think when we come out of lockdown and we go back to normal, it's, it's going to blow up. I think mm. yeah, like, the whole yeah. gigs, people are going to be yeah, everything. I think the scene in general. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people are going to have some pent up creative yeah. juices, mm -hmm. which might make it a bit more difficult for us as well. Yeah. Post, yeah. you know, post pandemic, because. 
I don't know, maybe... Yeah. The, the, the place is going to be like saturated. Yeah, yeah, us. maybe. Because well, I mean, a lot of people will want to release stuff at the, at the same thing. time. Yeah. yeah. Great for consumers, though. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, if you want to go out and watch bands, then yeah. it's going to be a good time. It will. Now is the time. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, we should release this once lockdown over, and then that'll make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. 100%. Mm. Two singles, fully written, ready to go, mm. in the bank right there's, now. There's another one, like, we've sort of recorded, but not... Yeah, we yeah. started yeah, a demo um, that's just sort of been lost in the ether, because... Yeah. Minutes, yeah. We'll bring it back, I'm sure we will. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to waste that. But we've, we've definitely got the two yeah, ready definitely. to go. That we're ready to do with uh, Phoenix Records and, and Banji, hopefully. So we're yeah, yeah, yeah. just waiting for the for the word go, really. When lockdown is over and when things can get all back to normal, mm-hmm. yeah. and then it'll be all systems go. We've got. It's got to think about the things that got lost in the early days as yeah. well, yeah. because we released a few things before Corey was in. How long have we been about for now? Can we have been a band. The it was like March something, was it not? <laughs> 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 it was we have um, been a band for years. I'm going to say like five years. Something like that. Six, but six at the most. At yeah, six at the very most. It'll be like six years this year, if anything, possibly five. So like, we did have some stuff recorded in, record in the. Uh, Early years, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We did a cover of "Damn It" by Blink, um, back with an old guitarist. Yeah. We um, we did a song called "No" as well, and that was on YouTube uh, for a while. Mm, it's still there. Is it? I, I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, it's like, definitely yeah. not on Spotify or anything like that. Spotify, like all the stuff. For anyone that <laughs> wants to go find our really old stuff. Yeah, you can find some <laughs> old weird stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we broke into the quote unquote big leagues <laughs> we uh, signed on with Phoenix Records oh, yeah Tell and then we got a record deal like, yeah yeah well that was that was a great time <laughs> it we, was, it we was. had a big record party we did an EP release at Bar yeah. 15 for our first EP yeah that was about 170 50 people something like that yeah yeah More about, yeah, about 200 odd people there. That, was, yeah. that was a really good gig that one crazy it was so warm in that room there wasn't yeah, it yeah it was that was a sweaty sweaty one that was a big big milestone of yeah. ours um, then there was the second EP after that. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're up to this point. Mm. I should say there's been like numerous sort of lineup changes throughout the band. Phil has always been the band. Has been like the the main yeah band member. Yeah. Um, I mean, I left for like a year or so. Yeah, that was just to go uni. to university, that was like wasn't it? Two years ago, mm. and during that time, my friend Ted, uh, who was also in Radio Masquerade. Um, replace me and he's the drummer on that first EP as well um, and then yeah all the guitarists we've been through yeah. so many guitarists yeah. um, god we're gonna name them all <laughs> Lewis Mikey Adam PC <laughs> yeah there were there were a lot of guitarists yeah. and um, the thing about that that phase of our journey was it was never a uh, unamicable or a bad split with yeah, anyone was it yeah. it was just like oh man I'd love to stay but I've changed hours at my job or I'm you know. moving to Manchester, Phil did, or, you know, just just life getting in the way. Ted had to go to London and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, we never make, we never want to make anyone feel like it's like, like you join this band, you've got to stay there for life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if you've got to move on and do all the stuff, that's but, fine. Yeah, having said that, the wheels then really got rolling yeah. when yeah. the three of us came together and that became like, you know, the lineup. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's when, yeah, it's, it really started, the ball really started rolling. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, our last EP was, I'll say, not last year. Was it the year before? <laughs> no, it was last year. <laughs> last year. Yeah. Well, like, well. No, last no, year, last no. Year it was. Been, it was, was the year lockdown, before, so it wasn't it? Twenty nineteen. Mm. No, it couldn't have been last year. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. We do a new, a new release. Yeah, we're like, we're yeah. overdue now <laughs> because we yeah. were going to do one every two Born years ready. or so. Mm-hmm. So after go missing the first EP and then overruled the second EP. Yeah. Plan for the next EP. We've got Happy Next Year, I think mm-hmm. is the name for it at the moment. For it. Happy Next Year. Yeah, hopefully you can all understand that one. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, that'll be out and about. <laughs> TBA. Yeah. <laughs> TBD. I don't know. Yeah. But um, soon. TB, soon. whatever you say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Having said that, though, we might be doing those as singles. 
True. instead of an yeah. EP at this point. It's still not fully decided. Yeah, no. still no, not fully decided on that one. It's a, you know, we never sort of make super concrete plans for the future. Things are always flexible. Yeah. But that's just how we think. I think it works best for everyone. Yeah. Mm. Which is why I think we've been like pretty resilient through the lockdown as well. Because we'd, we were never like practice every single week. On this yeah. Day. Like maybe yeah. we were for like a month or two, but it was never always like that. So. Yeah, it's definitely you know, worked in our favour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've mm. been able to work around it. It's not really affected us too much. We'll do one each. I think we should do <laughs> go one on each. Then, go on then. I'm going to go film. first so that I get the best choice. <laughs> and I'm going to say that my favourite song that we've ever done is probably Sandy Cheeks from the Go Missing EP. Yeah. Okay. Well, were you going to pick that as well? No, oh. because it was that. But I feel RSH3 Plasters beats it because I don't know why. I just feel that song is so diverse because... Mm. We just had... I think those are the songs yeah. what's sticking out to me with what we've said so far anyway. These songs are the ones that we had the most fun with writing. Mm. And I think that really translated to other people listening to it as well. Yeah. I think they're the most enjoyable songs. Yeah. yeah. I feel like RSH3 Plasters came out as like the most polished, like... Yeah. Like well, I just feel like it's probably the most well written song. I think yeah, as soon as I wrote it, I just felt I felt good about it. I was walked walked out, I thought, oh, this is gonna be the one. I can feel it. Mm. Mm. Playing it feels really good yeah. as well. <laughs> and then what a third song? Yeah, um, I would say patience as always because oh, that was the yeah. first song we ever wrote. That was. And it's just it's been there for the whole time. Yeah, I feel like the first song you write is kind of like uh, like as you grow as a band, you might be like, mm, you know, it doesn't really reflect how we like how we sound anymore. But I don't know. It's just always been like a staple mm. and. Yeah, I feel I like think, that song, yeah, that song like, like, because obviously when you released it, obviously I, didn't, I wasn't in this band at this point, but mm. when you said like, you know, you, you sampled me that song and I says, I like this, like, I feel I can go far with this. Mm. And that's when like, it kind of driven me to join the band a bit more. Yeah. I think Patience, as always, as well, is a song that we, I don't know, even subconsciously sometimes go back to. And if we're writing something and we don't think it sounds that good, it's because it's not yeah. sort of like that. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like defined the standard for what we want to... Yeah, yeah. yeah what, it was... All about. <laughs> yeah, it definitely defined our, our style at the yeah. time and mm-hmm. what we wanted to be. It it really suited us down down yeah. to a T like that. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> between the three of us, we picked the three, th- three songs I was going to pick anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think it was, I think it was a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to do an honor- honourable mention, but... I, th- I think those three just stand above yeah. them. Head and shoulders above the others, I think. What was going to be your honourable mention? I've got to know now. <laughs> I don't know. I could say clap <laughs> for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> don't look up clap. Don't. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not, not going to mention any others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, briefly touched on it before. We've got the two new singles that have just been sat there at the starting gates. Mm-hmm. Usain Bolt style, ready to go. So once everything becomes opened up again and available, that'll definitely be where we're starting off. And yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty safe to say that we'll try and put on the biggest gig we can as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. If more demos get, to be made as we well in the future. As, yes. a, as a group. Yeah, yeah. 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 Corey's got his home studio as well. Yeah, so yeah. Get, come round and just jam. Mm. Yeah, it'd be, be good. Mm. I think the best thing about being such a relaxed band as well is when we make a demo, we... We normally just freely share those yeah. anyway. Yeah. We throw yeah. them around and see what people think of them. So, if you're in the right place, that's that's another place to um, another thing to look forward to. And then into the further future, yeah, probably more of the same. Who knows? Yeah. Twenty year reunion show at some point. Twenty year reunion <laughs> show. Fifteen years. Oh, we could do what all those other emo bands do and say that we're going on hiatus, even yeah, though yeah. we've broken up. Yeah. And everyone can live in hope for years and years and we just never get back together. <laughs> Still on hiatus, everybody. Wait for it. Yeah, yeah in all seriousness, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun working with Phoenix Records so far. Yeah. So, um, we had a blast last time about the overall EP. Yeah, mm. I think we'll uh, probably end up carrying on with that still. Fingers yeah. crossed. If they'll have us. You know what? I might just flick out my phone for this one and... Uh, <laughs> Pull up my spot. You get so many things that run through your head at the same time. Uh, it's a lot of albums for me at the moment. The new Four Year Strong album. There's Brain Pain. Uh, um, I still like the new Blink album too. I'm a massive Blink 182 fan. So it's it's all about everything from the latest stuff, Nine, all the way back to Cheshire Cat and Dude Ranch Days and everything in between. 
Let me see what's on here. Hmm, yeah. Talking myself in circles by four years strong. That's a really good one at the minute. Especially when you're feeling a little bit angry because it's got a proper like, <coughs> <coughs> like headbanging sort of yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, <laughs> I've also been playing a lot of Rocket League recently too. So some of the more EDM stuff has been sleeping in there. Um, Dreamland by Fox Stevenson. Really enjoying that one at the moment. And I'll say for my third one, hmm. <laughs> Would it be weird if I said, nah? I don't know if that's too shameful or not. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to say it. Yeah, God, I've nah. been spinning Busted again recently. <laughs> First Busted album. Still love it. <laughs> Listen to it when I was about 12 years old. <laughs> I'm addressing these guys as much as the interview right now because yeah, we didn't know I'm breaking the news to everybody right <laughs> yeah. now, not just... <laughs> yeah, shocked, imagine how we feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a band with someone who still listens to Busted. <laughs> I noticed the seats slowly moving in that direction. Yeah. There's someone out there, late oh 20s, early 30s, who were like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks that one guy. Yeah. What about you, Rob? Um, okay, so for me, I mean, I'm a massive fan of the story so far. I'm always listening to those, so... The newest story so far album, like the, the title track off that proper dose, is an absolute banger. Um, a song called Versace Summer by Jank, which I had like some crazy deja vu with Phil earlier, so I'm sure he showed me that song, but he didn't. But he sounds, yeah. He took a lot of what Phil would listen to. Yeah, um, Rob really showed good. me it earlier, and he was like, You're pretty good. Yeah, did you remember this one? And I'm like, It's one of those Mandela effect moments. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Don't remember it at all. It's my first time. So those it was two, very good, though. And then I've been listening to a lot of Dumbroco recently. Can't really put my finger on why, but. Um, yeah, Whole Truth by Don Broco off their first album is a really good song. I just love the I just love the rhythm in it. I don't know. <laughs> Can't really explain it. Yeah, uh, so my I'm very diverse in a minute. I've been listening to Ovenoko Flow by Enya because it's part of my uni module and I'm getting sick of hearing it. <laughs> but you do what you gotta do and it's a good song, but you get to that point where I'm gonna absolutely hate it. Producers everywhere will know exactly, yeah. how much you have to <laughs> listen to a song over and over and over yep. again until you get it perfect. Yep. Uh, second one, I've been literally obsessed with the new Architects album. Um, there's a song on there, in, um, I think it's called Imperonance or something like that, with Winston McCall from Partway, Partway Drive, because you know I'm a metal lad at the same time <laughs> as well as a punk, so... It's got some beefy riffs in that. I think we have to hold that back sometimes as well. Yeah. <laughs> Corey's like, all right, let's have another breakdown here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just can't help We've it. We've already got a I breakdown, Corey. Come I on. I have to get some nice chugs in. We should yeah. do it like a Sum 41 and just do a thrash song. <laughs> or like some sort of... <laughs> uh, yeah, we've, we've got kind of thrash. There's um, Keep Delete. I'd say that's the thrashiest one. Yeah, I'd say so. I wouldn't call it thrash, but it's definitely the... It's quick. Yeah, it is quick. <laughs> sure. It is quick. And uh, yeah, third one, uh, I listen to a lot of Radio X, so like, I've uh, listened to a lot of Sam Fender at the minute, that Harp Sonic Missile song, it's a great song. I think Corey's like the dad of the group as far as yeah. musical tastes go. <laughs> Rob is the emo teen. <laughs> yeah, I never grew out of the emo teen. Though. And I am just the child, annoying little brother who still listens to Blink-182. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs>